Will the Menendez brothers be freed today? Attorneys for defendants Eric and Lau Menendez will ask a judge to reconsider the convictions of those brothers in what's called a status conference hearing today. The brothers serving life sentences without the possibility of parole for the 1989 murders of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. So what we want to know this morning there are three paths to freedom really for the brothers. So let's see how successful today's path could really be, right? So look at these on your screen. It's clemency from the governor. Uh, we know there's also a resentencing hearing scheduled for December 11th, and we've got a habeas corpus petition hearing set to happen today. So taking these in turn, California Governor Gavin Newsom declined to grant the brothers clemency petition. He's deferring to the brand new DA of Los Angeles County, Nathan Hockman, who spoke about the possibility of recommending resentencing to the court. He talked to Court TV about that. Let's listen. The way resentencing works is that on December 11th, there'll be a hearing. If I'm ready to proceed and have done that extensive factual and legal review, we'll proceed. If not, I might ask for some additional time, but I've got 34 years of criminal justice experience. Now, besides clemency and resentencing, the third option for potential freedom is a habeas corpus petition filed last year, actually, asking for a review of some brand new evidence that was not presented at trial. So that's what's going to be discussed today at the hearing that's set for 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The brothers are going to be there virtually. They won't be there in person. No cameras are being allowed in the courtroom. But we do have someone from Court TV who's going to be inside the courtroom watching everything that happens for us and reporting back on the details. So it will be an interesting day. Now, we have assembled a panel of sensational prosecutors to talk about this. I want to bring them in right now. Let's welcome in. Former prosecuting attorney. He's in the private sector practicing right now. He's also the speaker pro tem in the House in South Carolina, Tommy Pope. And I want to welcome in his colleague. They worked together putting away Susan Smith. You just saw him on TV last week. The current solicitor for the 16th Judicial Circuit of South Carolina, attorney Kevin Brackett. Uh, Kevin, great to have you on opening statements. Welcome. And I'm so glad I have you with Tommy. Uh, you two are, are uh, sensational lawyers and uh, sensational prosecutors. You're serving has been tremendous in South Carolina, both of you. So, um, Kevin, I'm going to start with you since you're here first today. Um, let's, let's talk about the brothers okay. being released. Do you think that there's actually a chance that they could, could, could be, uh, uh, that their freedom could be announced as soon as today? Well, Julia, it's California, so uh, anything could happen. Um, I, I would have one opinion if we were talking about South Carolina or other parts of the country and a different opinion for California. They, they have a different set of rules and standards they go by, apparently. So um, it, it, is, it is possible, but um, it sounds more like just from the way that this is being um, postured, that this is more of an opportunity for the parties to get together and sort of lay out a timeline for what might happen, uh, what each party would need to be prepared and to make sure that they're on schedule. So that's typically what happens at a status conference. Mm -hmm. Right, Kevin. Thank you for tempering our expectations with the caveat that it's California, as you said, so who the heck knows? <laughs> uh, Tommy Pope, the two pieces of evidence, as you know, the letter, this letter that, that came up, uh, apparently Eric is said to have written this letter to a relative. Uh, they say that it was written before trial, before he gave the testimony about being abused by his father. Uh, but it's been noted by people in that office, particularly one who came on court TV, John Lewin, that uh, we, don't, we really don't know about this letter. We have no idea when it was written. It could have been written a couple weeks ago. Uh, but it's, it's one of the things, nonetheless. Also, the other thing is that there's some outside corroboration for the claims. One of the members of the boy band Menudo is willing to come forward and say that he was molested by Jose Menendez at the mansion where the family lived and so also serving as potential corroboration. Um, what do you think about these pieces of evidence? I tell you, Julie, one, I'm disappointed. Brackett took my job as solicitor. Now you got him on court TV. You're about to put me out in the pasture, I know. But, uh, no, never. I tell you, never <laughs> we have actually experienced, uh, you know, the quote after the discovered evidence on some of our death penalty cases Kevin and I have dealt with. And it's, it's just ironic to me that this information always comes so remotely 
that that it's hard to to disprove it, so to speak. We had the Kevin will remember the stranger under the bridge that they miraculously found. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, I just I, I'm a concerned not. Well, fabrication, if you want to call it. I'm concerned about fabrication. I'm concerned that uh, it, I thought the first trial that ended in a mistrial, if I've read it correctly, uh, these issues came up. So I'm really interested in why, if it was out there already, why it wasn't brought up. I guess they're saying this is better evidence now. And uh, so, I, and I, ultimately I'm concerned that it seemed a lot political. We don't want to drive justice by Netflix specials or, you know, I mean, and so it concerned me that that prosecutor is interesting. We've got a new prosecutor is going to put a fresh set of eyes on it. Exactly, exactly. I love what you said, Tommy. I couldn't agree more. A fabrication. And that's something one of the deputy DAs in the office, John Liu, and I keep going back to him because he's, he's someone we all know at Court TV, famously prosecuted Robert Durst. Uh, we saw him on, on Court TV Live for many weeks trying that case. And uh, he said that in particular, Lyle, he said, but both of these brothers have a history of fabricating evidence. Fabricating evidence during the first trial when, as you noted, Tommy, all of this stuff was allowed in. We know the abuse claims were largely excluded in the second trial. And John Lewin said, how in the world can we trust this? It hasn't been vetted. So he's been one of those outspoken people who disagreed vehemently with George Gascon, uh, the outgoing DA. I've got a clip of him talking to the media about how there's such a split in his office. Let's watch. I have to tell you unequivocally that we don't have a universal agreement. Uh, there are people in the office uh, that strongly believe that the Menendez brothers should stay in prison the rest of their life. And they do not believe that they were molested. And there are people in the office that strongly believe that they should be released immediately. Mm. Even so, Kevin, let me go back to you, please. Even so, uh, their sentence was life in prison without parole. I mean, these were cold-blooded murders, as you know. Why in the world are these guys entitled to consideration? I, I guess, you know, I, I think of all the other criminals who are locked up for the same kind of thing. And why are the Menendez brothers looking for special treatment? Uh, your thoughts on that, please, Kevin. Well, sometimes in cases like this that are high profile, um, you know, there's a there's a, a, a tendency to suddenly find reasons to kick the embers and bring these cases back to life. Uh, they drew so much attention before, so it'll draw attention again. Uh, and, and that affects uh, these potential witnesses who might come forward because, uh, you know, it gives them a chance to sort of become involved and be in the limelight for a minute. Um, it really makes me wonder why this is even being considered because typically, and after discovered evidence issue focuses on actual innocence. And this seems to be more of an effort to, to revisit a motion, uh, an evidentiary motion that occurred in the trial, um, not, to, not to question whether or not they, they were guilty, but whether uh, you know, they had some mitigation for why they may have done what they did, which you know, that sort of thing can go on forever. And if this becomes the standard uh, for how we're gonna look at cases after the fact, then if we're gonna be able to dig into it to this granular level and try, try to adjust these sort of collateral issues, then you know, when will victims ever get resolution? Because any case is subject to having this uh, you know, kind of issue re revisited and, and new evidence supposedly found that's going to alter how uh, the sentence should have been imposed. So uh, I, don't, I don't really understand it from the East Coast, uh, how this, this sort of uh, issue could even arise. I love your analysis, Kevin. Uh, and you're right, when, you re when it really gets down to it, you, you pointed out something that's so key. Uh, what does this have to do with the, the facts of it? I mean, this was a planned, premeditated, brutal kill. I mean, after they had fired so many shots, yeah. they went out and reloaded and came back and fired more. And then they went on to spend their parents' money. I mean, blowing something like $700,000 in six months, living like kings. Uh, these guys certainly did. 
sit and act remorseful or act like victims then? What, what is this even about? Uh, I, I love that point, Kevin. Uh, Tommy, let me ask you please about the Menendez mania. You know, when, when you're a prosecutor, uh, you know, the, the job that, that you uh, held for so many years that Kevin holds now, uh, Tommy, how key is it to to tune out the, the, the noise from the, the hype and the, you know, the, the fascination uh, with these criminals uh, in order to pursue justice? I think absolutely it's key for the prosecutor, but it's also key for the courts. You know, going back to Smith, we talked about it's like bizarro world. Rulings would happen that you wouldn't think would normally happen. And so it's got to be focused in the courtroom and hopefully that's what will happen here. Exactly. I love having you both on the program and especially uh, together. This is such a treat for us. And you're going to stick with us. Tommy Pope, Kevin Brackett, stand by, please.